flatter instability occurs in elastic structures subject to follower load. This is the simplest example and was given by Ziegler. It is the so-called Ziegler column. It is a two degrees of freedom structure subject to a tangential follower load, P. When the structure moves, the load follows the structure, remaining tangential. There is no bifurcation for this system. But if the load falls within this interval, the structure is subject to flutter instability, which is a dynamical instability consisting uh, in a dynamical motion vibration of increasing amplitude. If the load is higher, then there is divergence instability, another kind of uh, dynamical instability. Our first problem is how to provide the follower load. This is a very difficult point and it was considered almost impossible until uh, a few years ago and Coiter wrote proposing the elimination of the abstraction of follower forces because he thought there was no realistic way of inducing such a follower load. Other scientists, Herman and Sujiyama, found a way to give uh, this load, uh, to provide this load to this structure. In one case, in the case of Herman, um, through a fluid flowing through a no nozzle and in the other case um, through a um, solid rocket motor. Both cases are complicated devices. Our point is are we able to find a simpler, a much simpler way of providing this tangential load? We will see that the answer is positive. But before going to the answer, let's introduce our second problem. Our second problem is can flutter instability be induced by dry friction? This is a very controversial issue because on the one hand uh, friction is known to be connected to certain instability phenomena, for instance stick and slip. On the other hand, friction is a mere dissipative term, so it is not easy to imagine how it can give rise to a motion of increasing amplitude. We, see, we will see that the answer to these two questions is very simple. The idea is to mount a wheel free of rotating about its axis at the tip of the structure and this wheel will be constrained to slide against a plane moving at constant speed. In this way Due to friction, there will be a, an axial force transmitted to the structure and the force will be a follower force of the type we have described before. Therefore, uh, with this simple device, we will give two positive answers to the two questions and we will show that the follower load can be induced by dry friction. Let's look at the experiments now. This is the experimental setup at the beginning of a test. When the test starts, this aluminum plate moves horizontally against the structure providing the tangential force. The aluminum plate is moved by a linear actuator which is not visible. Uh, during the test, this high-speed camera takes 25 shots per second and this is the structure which is connected to the frame through a loading cell measuring the axial load. So let's look more in detail at, at the structure. We may see here the wheel which is free of rotating. This is an accelerometer and these are the two hinges with linear rotational springs. So the structure can move like this, has two degrees of freedom. Um, the vertical force uh, transmitted to the plate can be calibrated uh, through this dead load, dead weight here, and uh, at the beginning of the test uh, we see the plate moving like this and if the force um, is low enough that the structure is stable, during the test the structure simply remains straight. But if the load corresponds to the flat region, we see the structure oscillating like this with increasing amplitude and reaching eventually a steady state. Or if the load uh, falls within the uh, divergence condition, then the structure at the beginning of this test moves like this and the test is stopped. Let's look at experiments now. 